Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is my fully working Commodore 64. Now, I've already showed you how I service a ZX Spectrum Plus 2 data corder. Now today what I thought I'd do is I'd show you how I service the Commodore C2N 1530 data set. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now the Commodore C2N 1530 data set, or as I'm just going to call it, Take Deck, because uh, people just call this a Commodore Take Deck, and if I just call it the Take Deck, it makes life a little easier. Um, is a little bit different than the one that's in the Spectrum Plus Two. The Take Deck in the Spectrum Plus Two is purely analog. Uh, what I mean by that is the Take Deck takes the analog signal coming from the um, tape head amplifies that and then passes that analog signal onto the spectrums plus two uh, motherboard and then that takes care of the signal by digitizing it um, where this is a analog to digital converter what i mean by that is exactly the same thing happens in this but this has an extra step where it digitizes a signal and then sends that digital signal to the Commodore 64. Now to service one of these tape decks, it's pretty easy. It's very similar to the ZX Spectrum Plus 2 tape deck. Um, what I'm going to do is tap into the amplification stage um, and then I'll use that to calibrate the azimuth. Um, what I'm not going to do in this video is go into details about you know why the tape head needs to be aligned and that lot. If you if you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description below to the Spectrum video. But yeah, I'll be aligning the tape head and uh, making sure that azimuth is okay. Um, so yeah, let's get in this thing. To get in the tape deck, it's very easy. There's just four screws I need to remove. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those, and I'll be able to take this back straight off. Now, to get the whole of the tape mechanism out, it's actually very easy, because uh, it was the actual back plate that holds the tape mechanism in place, so there's no screws holding it in. Now, to do that, um, all you do is you pull it from the back like this and lift it forward. But what you've also got to do at the same time, and I need two hands to do this, is you've got to pull this uh, bit of plastic forward like this, uh, and this will help you swing it out like that and get the keys out as well. And then you'll be able to get the whole of the mechanism out. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back. Now, to remove the actual caddy uh, is very easy, it's just clipped in high beside here. You can see there's a clip here on this part and there's a clip just here on this part what you need to do is you need to take your finger and bend them in like this uh, so you can swing out the caddy now again like I did with the spectrum you need to be very careful with this plastic because it is aging and it can crack very easy so yeah if you're going to take this out just be very careful that's the tape deck housing totally stripped down uh, what I'll do now is get these in soak and give them a good clean. What I want to do now is remove the actual function buttons to give them a good clean. Now to do that, um, what I need to do is remove this E-clip just here and then I'll be able to pull the bar through like this that holds them in uh, and these function buttons will just fall out. I've got the upper lower and cassette housing and the function buttons soaking in a little bit warm water with a little bit of detergent in there in my wash basin i'll leave them in there for half an hour and then come back give them a good scrub and clean what i want to do now is actually clean the actual tape mechanism now to do that the first thing i'm going to start off by doing is taking a soft brush now you want to use a soft brush you don't want to use a, a stiff a bristle brush you want to take this and you just want to you know go around like this 
um, and get the top uh, dust layer off. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, do this for about five minutes, just getting in and out of all the crevices uh, and getting all that top loose uh, surface dust off. So I'll carry on doing this uh, and then when I've finished, I'll come back. Don't forget to do the back side as well because the back side is just important. <laughs> now I've got all the surface dust off the top. I can give it a, a better cleaning now, get really in there and get rid of some of the grime that's in there. Now to do that, I'm going to take some cotton buds and I'm going to take some IPA. I'm going to soak the end in the IPA and I'm just going to go along uh, and give the whole of the system a good clean. Uh, and I'll do that for the front and the back. That's the tape mechanism all cleaned. Now it looked really clean um, from the video but you can see the the muck that's come off it so yeah just shows you you don't know how dirty something is until you clean it what I want to talk about now is lubrication um, now what you should never do uh, with one of these tape decks or tape mechanism is spray WD-40 in there um, WD-40 is not a lubricant um, some moron had done that to the ZX Spectrum Plus 2 I worked on because um, you know you can smell it you can WD-40 has got a certain smell to it and you know it straight away when you smell it but yeah you don't want to be using WD-40 in a tape mechanism what you want to be using is something like this uh, white lithium grease um, or gear grease now if you're stuck to um, what you need to lubricate and you don't know what to, to lubricate there's a very simple tip I can give you if you take a look at the uh, pinch roller here if you push it you can see the actual mechanism moves um, now that will give you a good indication uh, of what you need to lubricate so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend 5-10 minutes uh, lubricating this thing with um, white lithium grease I'll do that for the front and the back uh, and then when I've done that I'll come back and show you what it looks like as you can see I've lubricated uh, all the moving parts with some gear grease uh, what I want to do now uh, is replace the belts uh, there's two of them uh, now the first one is easy to get off you can just grab it like this swing it round you lift it over this uh, little clip here it's just the eject um, that flicks the um, caddy up and ejects the tape then what I want to do is just come around uh, and get it off the counter wheel here so that's the first belt off uh, now what I need to do to get the second belt off is there is a screw just here uh, and then I can move this up a little bit and then I can take the belt off so what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this screw and then show you how to get the belt off that's the uh, screw removed now what that allows me to do is just tilt it a little bit like this and you can see a channel that goes down here like this and what I'll be able to do now is just take the belt off so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back Put the new belts on. Uh, now I'm not going to bore you with that. It's just the same as taking them off. It's just the reverse. So I go out and put the the bigger one on first, and then I come back and show you what it looks like. That's the retainer screw put back in place. The new belts on. It's very easy to fit, guys. You just got to get it round this wheel, get it round this wheel, and then bring it round the motor. Um, what you need to be careful of is make sure you don't get any kinks in it um, but yeah that's the larger belt fitted what I'll do now is I'll go and fit the smaller belt to the counter and the counter belt 
is on you can see it turning the counter just there so um, yeah this thing uh, is pretty much mechanically serviced so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the function buttons back in there um, and then what I'll do is I'll clean the heads and then we'll calibrate the azimuth and just to point out here's the azimuth screw just here one last thing I want to do before I put the system back together and um, attach some wires so I can tap into the uh, analog out and calibrate the azimuth for this thing um, I want to clean the raise head the play record head the capstan and the capstan pinch wheel uh, and I'm just going to take some uh, cotton buds uh, with a little bit of IPA uh, and I'm just going to give those a clean so I'll go ahead and do that uh, and then come back let me talk a bit about calibrating the azimuth um, I mentioned this in my spectrum video where I calibrate the azimuth in that uh, plus two tape deck um, and the same principle uh, goes for this one as well um, you can't calibrate the azimuth in this position um, now the reason for that is because you'll calibrate it for when the system um, is like this and it will work perfectly fine as long as you like this um, but the moment you take the cassette and you put it in its caddy and you shut the lid uh, the actual cassette is in the caddy so what can happen is pretend this is the cassette now you've calibrated it for when it's like this now what can happen is now it's in its caddy it can be lifting the tape up a bit um, it could be rocking it backwards and lowering it a bit um, and that will throw out the azimuth again so when you're calibrating the azimuth you've got to do it when it's in its most natural position and that is in its caddy um, ready to play time to calibrate the azimuth on this Commodore tape deck uh, now to do that I need to tap into the analog side um, of this tape deck and there's no point tapping into the digital side once it's been digitized I've been wasting my time because um, the you know it's an analog signal so I need to look at the analog uh, signal coming out before it gets digitized now to do that uh, it's very easy I'll put a little um, annotation of where I'm going to tap into uh, and it will show you on the schematic uh, where I'm going to tap into um, now I'm going to be soldering a, a couple of wires uh, to the um, PCB um, now Commodore actually did us a massive favour, they put a hole uh, in the bottom um, of the tape deck so I can feed the wire through there, uh, hook it up uh, and then shut the lid uh, and then calibrate the azimuth and it will be in its most natural position there. So what I'll do is I'll get those wires soldered onto this PCB and then we'll get calibrating that azimuth using my scope. I've tapped into the amplified analog signal coming from this tape deck. What I'll do is I'll put a, a little annotation and it will show you in the schematic where I'm uh, tapping into. So yeah, I'm going to get this base uh, back onto this uh, and then we can hook it up to my Commodore 64 and then I can monitor the signal uh, to calibrate uh, the azimuth. So yeah, I'll get all set up and then come back. I'm all up top, ready to go. I've got the tape in its most natural position, i.e. the way it's going to be used. I've got the scope probe hooked up. Uh, it's reading the analog amplified signal coming from the tape neck. And I've got my scope all ready to go. Uh, now let me explain what I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to be playing this tape and on my scope you're going to see a 6.3 kilohertz signal now what I'm going to be doing 
is I'm going to be adjusting the azimuth like this and I'll be hunting for a, a sweet spot uh, and that sweet spot will be when I see maximum amplitude on my scope so you'll see it small and then I'll bring it in it'll get bigger and then if I keep going it will get smaller again uh, so I'll go back and then it'll get bigger and if I kept going it will go smaller again so I'm just going for the maximum peak amplitude so yeah let's crack on with this thing so let's let's play on the tape let the lead in come and you'll see that signal 6.3 kilohertz signal and there it is now I'm just going to put my screwdriver in there and I'm going to start adjusting the azimuth and as you can see it's getting bigger keep going it gets smaller I'll go back it's bigger again I'll keep going and it gets smaller again and I'm just hunting for the maximum peak and if I had to do it I'd say it's about yeah I reckon I can get that a bit better yeah I'd say that's it that's maximum peak right there guys uh, and that's it that's the azimuth calibrated it really is that simple when you've got a azimuth alignment tape tape decks all serviced switch on the Commodore 64 all ready to go let's see you can load a game from tape now I've got my favorite and everybody else's favorite Operation Wolf so let's pop that in the tape deck it's Commodore one stop and we get a press play on tape so let's do that let's press play and hopefully we get a load now this tape's got a, a rather long lead in. And there we go. It's the wolf screen. So we're good so far. Okay, we shouldn't be far off until we get the famous Ocean Loader it's Ocean Loader 4 by Jonathan Dunn and there it is Magic Tune <laughs> We should also get the uh, screen draw uh, in a second. Tune! <laughs> and there we go <laughs> winner winner yeah so it looks like it's loading fine um, what I'll do now guys is I'll just let this uh, finish loading I'm not going to film it all so yeah once it's finished loading uh, I'll come back Choo. <laughs> We're finished loading. It took 113 ticks. Now did it load? Let's have a look. You bet your ass it did. <laughs> okay, let's start again. And yeah, there we go, guys. Working a treat. And that's what you find uh, with these tape decks. Very rarely does something catastrophically go wrong with them. Um, normally you can just bring them straight back to life with a, a bloody good service. 
And as you can see, it's working great. I get my ass kicked because I'm not playing. <laughs> so yeah, there you go guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe. All the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Oh no, I'm getting my ass kicked. Winner, winner. Catch you next time, guys.